Come on. Come on. I'll give you in a bit. Come on, kid, it's a bit warm. Let's get out a bit of a tilt. I'll do. Muggy as today, guys. Been down strange ways today. Bit of a photo shoot for the book cover of the follow-up book. My book to Strange Ways Prison Officer's Story. Still gives me the uh, the creeps thinking about it. So today I'm going to talk about segregation units in UK prisons, segregation units, uh, solitary confinement, the shoe, if you're American, the block, lots of names, chokey, whatever you want to call it, the punishment block. So a typical day in a segregation unit, Monday to Friday. First of all, those people that might not know, traditionally, it's all your bad lads that have been in the segregation unit. Um, there's a lot of people that make a career out of being in segregation units, probably one of the UK's most infamous prisoners. Charles Salvador, formerly Charlie Bronson, spent most of his life in segregation units. Um, this way, kidder. Special conditions. Basically, you're on 23-hour bang-up and everything will be done by application. So, seven days a week, first thing in the morning, officers would go around the cells. Do you want a shower? Do you want a phone call? Do you want exercise? So if you opted for all three by application, you had to apply. At some point you will get an hour's exercise. You will get a period of time on the phone. Usually you will book a time slot or ask for a time slot. You wouldn't necessarily get one. Um, and a shower at some point. Other than maybe collecting your meals and not everyone does, that is all the time you'd be out of your cell. So, um, daily routine. As an officer, been around all the prisoners, asked them whether they wanted the showers and the like. Usually about 10 o'clock, duty governor who was doing the adjudications would come down. What's an adjudication? So in prison, you can be placed on report, slang term nicked. Um, very much like what happens on the out when you go to court, only on a lesser scale. So if you've had a fight, you might be called down there, placed on report for fighting. Um, you would be allowed to give mitigation. The charge laid against you would be read out. The governor would do his bit and then he would make a decision. Uh, usually, reporting officer would be required. So if I place someone on report for fighting, I'd go down, I'd read my evidence. Um, the senior officer, next level up, would read the charge. And like I say, prisoner would be asked to go guilty or not guilty. Punishments could go from being given a caution, the least punishment, you know, warn, do it again. Um, back in the day, governors could give added days, particularly for drug offences. Uh, that's no longer so. If an offence is deemed serious enough, uh, the adjudication will be opened, the process gone through, and then the prisoner would be required to come back in front of a district judge. They started having judges coming into prisons, holding like a mini court. Um, at that level, prisoners were entitled to uh, legal representation. You'd get all manner of people coming in. I think they used to do it twice a month at Strange Ways and Forest Bank, maybe Tuesdays. 
uh, somebody come in, not necessarily a barrister or a solicitor, but somebody from a legal firm to um, fight the case. What a big con. The money it used to cost. Um, very, very few people, when it went in front of the judge, would get off without a charge. So, um, adjudications, they'd start about 10, run while dinner. Occasionally, they will go after dinner. So what's the adjudication room look like? Imagine a very large dining table. At one end, furthest from the door, you'd have the duty governor. He would be seated there. To one side would be the segregation senior officer. He was there to read the charges and sort of supervise proceedings. Opposite him, you might have a couple of chairs for reporting officers. Opposite end of the table to the governor, nearest the door, there will be three chairs. One for the prisoner, when he was invited in. He will be asked to pull his chair under the table, because these could be um, quite emotionally charged proceedings. Uh, quite often prisoners did kick off. They will be asked to pull the chair under the table, and then the two escorting officers would sit behind the prisoner with their feet on the chair. So if he did kick off, push back or whatever, um, they, they were best placed to deal with that. Sometimes, depending on the prisoner, I've been in adjudication room with 12 staff. Obviously that's next level. So the adjudications in the morning, occasionally, if they were running late, they might run into the afternoon, but not usually. So the afternoon, Monday to Friday, would be showers, phone calls, exercise. Evening, might be a couple of phone calls to do, maybe the odd shower. Um, Saturdays, Saturday pretty much the same. Adjudications in the morning, Saturday afternoon very quiet. And Sundays, flat out boring showers phone call exercise some people had a paper you give the papers out total boredom weekends bored me to death so a little bit about the people that you'd get down the segregation unit a lot of volatile people a lot of dangerous people towards the end of my career you were getting more and more people who just just to go back to the nickings um in the morning before the the governor will get the segregation unit prisoners would be brought down from the wings and the segregations would have holding cells so the prisoners who've been placed on report would be in them cells you get them out in the adjudication room in the holding cell back to the wings just to clear that up you start getting prisoners coming down on nickings being placed on report and refusing to leave the segregation unit strange ways had one who'd been there months, just refused. So you might think, why would he want to do that? Some people don't need a TV. You're getting a shower, you're getting a phone call, you're getting your meals and you're getting peace. Yeah, you might get the odd noisy prisoner, but you're getting peace. That person might be in debt in the prison, might be under threat. Yeah, might feel safe down the segregation unit. But it's a very dangerous place. For me, the staff, you know, you, you need to be switched on down there um, all the time. Stuff, procedures and that, that again, a lot of it's common sense. If you've got someone who is volatile, maybe on a three officer unlock and a senior officer, so that's four staff to get them out and more. We've had people with 12 staff and two senior officers to get one person out. You know, you might ask them to move to the back of the cell, unlock their cell to let them out for shower exercise. They come out, stand back. Let them out, let them walk in front of you down the landing. You know, you have to be switched on. So I did work uh, in the block at Forest Bank, the segregation unit. You get visitors every day. Duty governor comes down, chaplaincy come down. IMB, Independent Monitoring Board, their volunteers who come into prison, they would come down. The reason all them people come down there, 
And the reason prisoners who are held down there, I think it's have weekly assessments, which might involve the mental health in reach team, is because it's isolation, solitary. 23 hours in a cell on your own with your own company. There are rules and procedures when you're in the segregation for stopping down there and assessments. I've met prisoners who spent years, literally years, in segregations. We had one lad come to healthcare. He was only with us a few hours before he kicked off and ended up back in the seg. Just wait for the train to go, guys. Six years he'd been in segregation. Since he came into prison, he was halfway through a sentence, not a day outside segregation, other than when he was transferred to strange ways and he spent a few hours on healthcare. So, coming to the, towards the end of my career at Strange Ways, um, I moved to A-Wing, the induction wing. Three weeks I was on there before I got injured. Saw the SEG, principal officer. So you've got officer, senior officer, principal officer, then governor. He says, what are you doing down here? I says, I work down here. The application procedure, sorry for segregation, is literally you would apply and you would have to go through a panel and interview and that, see whether you were suitable. He said to me, I'd have had you on the seg. You know, straight away, no messing. I says, I know that. He says, do you want to work on the seg? I went, no. He says, why? I says, the staff you've got. He says, what do you mean by that? Already at that time, there was staff down there that, let's say how it is, should never have been working down there. They weren't switched on. Um, they were weak prison officers. Because you do get weak prison officers. Not everyone is up for it. Not everyone is switched on, astute. Not everyone has common sense. And more and more, more staff like that are being put in these places because we're running out of staff, we're running out of experienced staff. A couple of bad assaults at Strange Ways. You see, a prisoner who's going to kick off, who's going to assault someone, yeah? Some, 1%, don't matter who's opening the door, they're going to have a go. Others, they'll have a look. Three of me and a senior officer, nah, not today. Then they'll wait. Oh, yeah, I'll have a go at these three. That's how it works, guys. Dangerous places to work. A young lass, 22 years old, has just come out of training. She messaged me about a month ago, asking me about segregation units. She knew nothing about them. Straight out of training, big prison, down south, straight into the block, straight into segregation, as a young, inexperienced lass. Advice, <laughs> very difficult. Take care of yourself. Take a step back and observe very carefully what goes on, procedures. When governors and people were visiting segregation units, opening doors to people who can be volatile, you always put yourself as a staff member between the prisoner and the governor, the IMB, the chaplain. Goes without saying. Dangerous places, volatile places. Lots of people getting assaulted. Yeah, not good. All right, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Prison segregation units, UK prisons. Segregation units be pretty much the same all over the world. The Green Mile. The Green Mile, most of that film was, uh, was in a block, a shoe, a segregation. Pretty good. When I watched that film, the procedures... Other than not having walls to the cell and a cell door, just as you expect, the sort of people you would expect. Cheers, guys. Stephen, honour us with your presence. There we go, kid. Good lad. I'll see there.